Have you ever been so frustrated you wanted to walk into Walmart and just slap the greeter? I mean, things were going great. You're making phone calls. It's not happening. Nobody's getting back in touch. You cannot get your sales moving. You got to make it happen. You don't know how. You're confused. You've gone from being on top of the world, and now you're thinking, hey, why haven't I heard from you? Well, back in 1876, an old boy named Bill invented a contraption that you know so well. By the 1950s, they're in everybody's home. It's a crazy little thing we call the telephone. That is one on every corner, the back of every bar. You can get one in your briefcase, a plane or in a car. So tell me why, why? haven't I? her instruments, people were spellbound. They were, <gasps> and that cow's just sitting there chewing, minding its business. She nods to the sound, and all of a sudden you hear, da na 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 squirt, 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 squirt. I mean, she could make music. It was awesome. People started to clap, but the photographer for the local paper thought, wow, what a great shot. If I can get my supersonic Nikon flash up in the face of that cow for the front page of the paper, wouldn't this be a great picture? Well, he got in front of that animal and started firing, firing pictures. Poop, poop, poop. And that cow quit chewing, looked at that man. And then the tail starts to wiggle. Well, that girl got up because she knew something else was going to happen, because that's the international symbol for hurry. She jumps up. She goes to get the galvanized bucket. That pageant director jumped up. He went to get the bucket. They both tripped over the main power source. That whole stage went completely black. And all you could hear was a much relieved animal. It was a mess. They had to evacuate the auditorium, call in the janitorial people. They had to... Watergate, Shovelgate, Moppagate, you name it. It was horrible. It was totally just confusion and bedlam everywhere. And bless her heart, I want you to know, this child was so confident and so in control and had such a great attitude, she tapped that guy on the back in the midst of all this bedlam. You know what she said? Excuse me, can I please do that again? Can I do it again? Well, you know, he just wanted to really choke her then. But the girl that could have been and should have been Miss Normal was not going to give up. And see, that's why you're here today. You come to this conference because you're saying the same thing. Can I do it again? Can I try it just one more time? So I got my merchandise, got my space bar. She's checking me out. And bless her heart, she grabs that space bar and starts to study it and starts to scan it. And then she said the most profound thing. She said, let do that at home. <laughs> then I realized that child had something else pierced. I said, what? Because I wanted to hear it twice. <laughs> she said, let do that at home. Then I wanted to say, honey, when you fell in that tackle box, did you lick it? And I said, no, nah, I don't believe I want that space bar. So she put it in a great big plastic container marked on the container, return to floor. Now, I'm telling you something. I know people that that would bug them all day long. They would seethe over, over that instead of finding the humor. Let me tell you about first grade. Y'all, I was ugly. I was. These lips have never changed size. Mama said, honey, you'll grow into them. I said, better hurry. And I lost my two front teeth. 
and I was such a tomboy. I'd wear my flannel shirt and my corduroy pants and my penny loafers. My hair was so short, people thought I was a boy. <laughs> and I remember that magical day when the teacher said to all of us in the class, now y'all look cute tomorrow because the big high school girls are going to pick out the cute little girls to be in Little Miss Merry Christmas. Oh, but next to me, honey, they were fixated on the class diva. You know her. Everybody's got one, Little Miss Perfect or Little Mr. Perfect. She had a stick-out dress on. Her mama put a stick-out dress on her. She walked around all day to school like she was an airplane, just like this. <laughs> she had on poodle socks and her Sunday shoes. Her mama had put those pink spongy rollers in her hair the night before, and as we say in, in the South, her hair was jacked up to Jesus. <laughs> and I remember walking to the front of that class in front of all those high school girls, grinning my heart out with no teeth, big lips, and looked like a boy. And those high school girls laughed at me. I can remember it like it was yesterday. They laughed. Seventeen years and five months later, I was walking across the stage in Atlantic City, New Jersey, as Miss South Carolina. My field of dreams was coming true. But let me tell you something. It was not an easy ride. Well, when I got into high school, got involved with teaching dyslexic children. I mean, I felt good about me. And I got fired. They told me I was dyslexic. Well, I wanted to go to college. I took my PSAT, my SAT, my ACT, my DUMB. <laughs> I could not make a decent grade. Could not. Oh, I'm so thankful and so blessed. You know, I got a grant. And I ended up graduating from Columbia College. I started out on academic probation. I want to tell you, I graduated in one semester, I was on the dean's list. And I won the highest awards ever voted at that college by my peers. I'm blessed. And then I went on to graduate school. Hard work, smart work. Well, they're getting ready to announce Miss America, as she would say, America. We're all holding hands. And everybody always says, what do y'all talk about? We well, lie. You look to the girl to your right, and you lie. You say, I hope you win. You do not mean that. <laughs> I mean, come on. And she looks back at you and says, no, 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 I want you to win. I said, oh, no, 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 no. I want you to win. Lies. I looked at Miss Mississippi, and I said, I hope you win. Because she was supposed to say back to me the lie. You know what she said? I'm going to win. <laughs> I said, what? She said, I've been planning on being Muslim Marker. Since I was in that wreck, she was in a terrible car accident. She was thrown through the windshield, had 100 stitches in her face, messed up her legs. She had like a miracle. I believe in miracles. I do. All of a sudden, the master of ceremonies, Burt Parks, last time he ever emceed Miss America, he said, I'm the new Miss America is Miss Mississippi. She looked at me and said, I told you I was going to be Miss America. <laughs> she walked down that runway. I was, oh. Now, I know what y'all are thinking. Probably two things. When was it? Which will remain in the vault. And how'd you do? How'd you do, Jane? How'd you do? I hate that. I will tell you how I did. I did not win Miss America, but I did marry her boyfriend. So when you think about your life and what it takes to be a success, think about the value of hard work, the value of smart work, Go the extra mile. Have that attitude of an extra mile. Be consistent. Consistency, personally and professionally. And the last thing, always have a great sense of humor and laugh along the way. Those things combined will help you stay successful and hopefully in your life, you will know how to handle those tomatoes that come your way. Don't ever let anyone throw those tomatoes at your field of dreams. Thank you.